Welcome, everyone. I'm Sarah Franklin. I'm chair of the Anne McLaren Memorial Fund, which is sponsoring this event. I see you all signing in, participants. Welcome to the symposium today. As many of you know, uh, this symposium was postponed from a year ago due to the global pandemic. And I am sure none of us expected we would still not be back on campus a year later. Um, but we have certainly learned a lot about how to do Zoom webinars like this one. Um, in the meantime, and a huge advantage of this, of course, is that we can reach a much larger audience in less time with less carbon emission and much lower costs. And Anne McLaren, would have appreciated the lessons of the pandemic. She was a scientist who believed passionately in international collaboration, in public outreach, in interdisciplinary conversations like this one. And above all, she had unending faith in the power of collective action to bring about progressive social change for the betterment of everyone. Um, the field in which she worked and that we're addressing today, the biology of the very earliest stages of human development, was arguably more pivotal to the 20th century than we realize even now. Not only modern genetics and reproductive biology, but huge translational leaps, such as the oral contraceptive pill, IVF, prenatal screening, artificial insemination, genetic modification, cryopreservation of gametes and embryos are all the poster children of the late 20th century in which the re-engineering of reproduction, development and heredity were not only headline news but foundational to the political economies of nations around the globe. Increased control of reproduction and heredity in animals, plants, people, and microorganisms is not only the hallmark of modernity, but as Marx himself was among the first to point out, the foundation of the global financial system and industrial capitalism. It wasn't just cars, coal, and steel. It was genes, cells, and proteins. And so as we enter the third decade of the 21st century, the biology of reproduction, development, and heredity is accelerating in almost every direction. And Anne McLaren would have correctly understood this moment as one in which the politics of biology matter as much as the science. As the architect alongside Mary Warnock of the UK's famous 14 day rule, limiting human embryo research, Anne McLaren demonstrated an astute understanding of the need for clear regulatory guidelines in order for basic experimental science to be supported by an enduring social consensus. And we are entering a period now in which this principle that in exchange for controversial experimental bioscience to thrive, it has to maintain the confidence of the general public will be repeatedly tested. So we're here today to think through the implications of synthetic gametes and germline development for science and society because it's never obvious how to bring together a wide range of interdisciplinary perspectives or to reach a consensual view on controversial new technologies. 
um, to build a firm basis for public confidence in either experimental science or science policy like CRISPR, we need to have as many different kinds of disciplines as possible in the room. Um, and we do know, what we do know is that the answers to such complex problems are always better when there are many different kinds of problem solvers around the table. So that's what we have today. We have an incredible group of speakers, chairs, and panelists around the table today. We have many of the leading figures in this field from diverse disciplines alongside early career scholars, postdocs, and PhDs. I'm sure Anne is in the room too, probably also Mary, because the key word here is translational. And the objective today is to widen the translational conversation so that as many people as possible can participate. So before we turn to our first speaker on our tight timetable today, I want to sincerely thank everyone in the room for attending, including all of you who are live streaming. We're especially grateful too for our fantastic conference team, Lois Gibbs, Christina Rojek, Yvonne Frankfurth, and Chantal Novak. So following our first two talks by Professor Azim Sirani of the Gurdon Institute here at Cambridge and Professor Robin Lovell Badge from the Francis Crick Institute in London, we'll have a short break for questions and discussion. You can put questions in the chat, those of you who are in the Zoom room, and you can also unmute and ask a question if you raise your hand. And we'll then proceed to the final presentation in the first panel by Dr. Sarah Chen from Edinburgh. Um, this will be followed by a second discussion period before we take a 20 minute break. And it is quite a packed uh, program today. Um, Yvonne is posting the program again in the chat in case you wanted to have it to hand. And so I will be um, keeping us strictly to time and I will be handing over now without further ado to Professor Azim Zirani to start us off. Mm -hmm. 